Good morning, everybody. Um, thanks for joining us this morning, and uh, I am really grateful to have you here, and i um, glad to be here. It is uh, a good morning, and um, so, so very grateful for Ben being on uh, line with me last night, having the opportunity to have that discussion, and, and to just wrestle with that reality of the word last night of, of how do we do this? How do we how do we be doers of the word, not just hearers only? How does our faith re reflect and um, demonstrate the the reality of of, uh, of our faith uh, through fruit? Fruit, you know, how does that develop? So, I want to welcome you this morning and um, just ask you to do this for me, if you would. Um, as we are getting on and, and getting started, one of the things that I'm learning about Facebook is that if you guys will like it or share this video if it's important to you, if you think it's valuable, if you can like or and or share the video, it'll actually help get the posts out farther and, and more people will see it. So good morning, you guys. Uh, good, good morning, and uh, it is good to see you. So Shana, thanks for all of your, your, uh, your encouraging <laughs> videos, watching you uh, go through the, your, your faithfulness of working out has just been incredible watching the, the work you're putting in there. So way to go. Keep, uh, keep that up. Keep working hard. Um, you're making me feel like I should go out and do something. So anyway, uh, good to see you guys. Hey, we're going to be in, in uh, Psalm 24 today. And um, I, I will we'll jump in there and and get started here in just a minute. It's it's pretty amazing. Psalm actually, when you start when we as we look at it, I think we're going to be really encouraged and um, and challenged by that as, as we see the text this morning. So um Oh man, it's it's good to see you guys, all of you. Good morning. Thanks for joining us today. Um, I did something uh, kind of, which is funny for me. It's it's a new thing for me, um, but I actually tried to play one of my own original songs and posted it on on uh, Facebook today and on YouTube. And uh, I, it's interesting because I'm uh, there's something about writing your own song and then posting it. Um, so I'm, I'm nervous about it and um, made a couple of mistakes on the recording. So I was going to get rid of it. I was going to throw it away and try and do it again. And then I realized that part of what we've done, part of our relationship has been um, me just being myself and being honest. And so uh, that includes some of the flaws and some of the um, times where I, you know, where I don't do things really well and I, 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 I make small mistakes. So I left all of my mistakes in there and I, I posted it as it is. So, um, anyway, if you get a chance, give it a listen and, uh, yeah. So kind of a, kind of a funny thing to do that and to be nervous about. So, um, you know, I am aware that there's some challenges and, and, uh, there are things changing. I want to share with you guys, one of the things that I'm really excited about, um, the opportunity that we have to be um, the church over the next few weeks is going to be very, very interesting. Um, as our culture gets, as our as our um, state and our, our city and, and the people in this get more and more anxious, more and more uh, frustrated and, and begin to um, express those frustrations. How how do we respond to that? How do we how do we honor God? How do we do all this stuff? I, I'm I'm wrestling through that, and and um, my goal is to share a little bit with it with y'all on on Sunday, kind of where the elders are at and what we're thinking as far as moving forward. But one of the things that's really grabbed me is that we have an incredible opportunity as the church um, as as they slow play this reopening process. Uh, for us to gather as small groups and to really uh, build the value and the connection of the home church or the small group meeting. Um, so I'm really looking forward to, to intentionally and, and, and um, very practically going after trying to connect people into small groups in their, in their community and, and around, you know, with the people that they're, they're close to. So um, be watching for that as we go forward. I think it's going to be a really, really great time and a, and a great opportunity for us to connect uh, and to build relationships there. So grab your Bibles, you guys. Let's jump into Psalm 24 and see what David is sharing um, uh, in particular about, um, about the Lord today. And that, I, I forgot that was another reason. That's one of the reasons I actually shared the song. Somebody's calling me. You, that's awesome. Um, that's one of the reasons that I shared the song was because, um, this song is about a time in my life where, um, where I recognized and God confronted me on sin and issues in my own heart that I had to address that I, there wasn't, there wasn't an option for it. I had to address it. 
Um, and, and God brought restoration to my life. And part of my time in dealing with that sin and, and writing that song came actually out of second Psalms or I mean, second Samuel as I was, um, as I was growing in my relationship and, and understanding restoration by God, um, I went in and, and just reread second Samuel to see how is it possible that God could, God could restore David when he, you know, he did the worst of the worst and, and how did that process work? So um, that was the reason I wrote the song was because of my time in second Psalms and watching David, watching David respond to God's mercy and his restoration, watching God, David respond to the conviction of God. And when he came and confronted him on his sin. Um, and so when David writes like he does in, in, in Psalm 24, it's particularly impactful for me uh, because I'm aware of the need for the love of the Father to confront my sin. I'm aware of my desperate need for his forgiveness and, and for his restoration and for my need to see God the way that David did and to have a heart um, like David does for God. So uh, open your Bibles, Psalm 24. We're going to begin right there this morning. Uh, text says this, uh, Psalm 24, verse 1. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and those who dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. Who shall ascend the hills of the Lord and who shall stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not lift up his soul to what is false and does not swear deceitfully. He will receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Such is the generation of those who seek him, whose face, who seek the face of God, of the God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, the king of glory, uh, that, that the king of glory may come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, and lift them up, O ancient doors, that the king of glory may come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. You know, as we think about David and, and, and the challenges that he went through and how he sees the Lord, I, I love that um, in this particular psalm, he is exalting God, he's praising God, he's lifting him up. And, and here we see in this particular text that he first extols God as being the, 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 the one that owns it all, that deserves and, and possesses everything that's in it. Um, and, and, you know, all of creation, and obviously that includes us. And I don't know. What do you guys think when you do that? How does that how does that affect how you uh, read scripture, how you look at life? Um, I, I would love it if you'd comment in in the in the post here because I can see your guys's comments it just takes a couple seconds and I have them. But when you think about God uh, possessing everything and, and it's not that it's not that he that he paid for it. It's not that that um, it's it's not really because he's uh, you know all the, this powerful God that that threatens us into this position. This is his rightful spot um, as the creator of all things, as the creator of all mankind, of all earth, of everything that's created. He rightfully possesses the 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 authority and the ownership of all that is here. You know, one of the things that that catches me is that. Um, if that's true, I think of it kind of like my car, right? Um, I bought my car. I have the title for it. Um, well, technically, I, I owe a little bit still on it. So technically, I guess I really don't own it. I'm paying somebody else. So let's use a different car. The Ford Flex, the, the one that's cheap. Um, we own that one. That one's paid for. Um, in fact, even better illustration is our Ford Explorer that uh, we had a, 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 a um, repo company show up at our front door at five o'clock in the morning, hook up to our Ford Explorer one morning. And I go charging out there, um, in, you know, in my fat pants, um, you know, ready to go to war because it was my car. And I have the title for it. It's in the house. It's all paid for. It's done. And here these guys are out there hooking up to my car to haul it off. And I'm I'm you know, graciously exchanging words with them like Jesus would have done probably a um, little exaggeration there, but I I'm, I'm asking for them to prove to me that they own the car. Cause I have the title inside and, and Sally's on the phone with police, getting the title, doing all that stuff. And, and they present documentation to me. And I walk through the documentation and explain to them their lack of intelligence and their inability to read words and addresses and all the stuff that goes with being a very polite Christian in five o'clock in the morning. But I owned that car and they could not take it. They, they didn't have any right to possess it because it was mine. 
Now that's a simple thing. It's a small thing. It's it's a it's a physical thing. It pales in comparison to to that of the creator of the earth who created all of this from nothing. And therefore, what we see David extolling about the character and person of God is that he he rightfully possesses all of it. He has the right of ownership over all things on the earth. So when you think about how that how our response to him is impacted by that. Um, when he says that we should love like he does, when we're actually going to see that on Sunday, Jesus is going to describe for his disciples um, as they're struggling to understand his his role, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> his role as as servant, that he's going to come and die as the as the great servant, the Lamb of God, and they they want him to be king and to go and take control and and to possess the land and to kick out the people that, that they don't like. But he has a, a bigger and a, and a more powerful kingdom purpose that's opposite of man. Well, you know, when when we see that and 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 we see God say, "Thus you should behave." In fact, look at verse three, right? Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord, and who shall stand in His holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not lift up his soul to whatever is false, and does not swear deceitfully, he will receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of His salvation. Such is the generation of those who seek him, who seek the face of the God of Jacob. Here's this picture of who it is that, that gets to enter into the kingdom. And it's those who have pure hands and a pure heart, who, who don't follow idolatry, who don't worship other things, who don't offer their soul to things that are far, uh, false, which is that, that's an idol or things that are un, untrue, who seek after the face of God. When we when we look at our own lives, do we actually see that we seek after the face of God, that we are engaged in that process of purity in, in the pursuit of him? And I, I have to look at my own life and I, I say, you guys, I've got sin. I've got things that I'm wrestling with. God's exposing those things. He's showing me my heart attitudes. He's showing me bad responses. There's things that I allow into my head that I entertain in my in my head and in my thought life that that can lead me. Um, away from this idea of pure hands and a pure heart and and or clean hands and a pure heart and and that at times caused me to be so wrapped up in my world in my immediate context that I'm not seeking the Lord. And so if we take that into context that God rightfully possesses all things that they're his, they're 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 made by him, they're they're for him, um, therefore they are subject subject to him, that, that we should be subjective or submissive uh, in submission to him. And so when he says, thus you shall do, and we say no, uh, it puts us in a posture of rebellion and, and disobedience. Um, you know, if if God wasn't real, if he really didn't own us, if if evolution were true, um, in, in the sense that that we all we all formed from nothing and God had nothing to do with it, the 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 um, Darwin Darwinian evolution, if if that concept at its at its fullest was true and, and we were not created by an intelligent God that that created um mankind and all of the purposes which the bible seems to indicate that we were created by god that we are his creation um uh, look at john chapter one um but if if, if evolution is true and, and we don't have any obligation to obedience to god then he has no right to demand or expect or or hold us accountable for obedience and yet when we see in scripture, the way that the, the scripture is written, the way that it teaches us, what it points us to in the God of the universe is that he is the creator, that we are his possession, that that as a holy and right, pure God, the, the king of glory, he has the right to ask us to follow him. He has the right to require us to respond um no, not require. That's the wrong word because he doesn't require. But but there is an expectation of 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 response to him um, that results in our kingdom living, becoming heirs of the throne. It's it's funny that he he actually doesn't demand that we do that, does he? Um, because we have the he allows people to choose not to live in obedience. He allows people to to reject him and and to choose. Uh, godless eternity.
So I, I think that when, as I read Psalm 24, the, the challenge that I have in my heart, and I don't know if you guys have caught this, it's, it seems to be the theme that's going through my life right now, is how I'm looking at God, how I view God. Do I see him as the ultimate creator, the, the, the highest, um, the, the highest uh, uh, the greatest God. Uh, see, that's not even right. Cause he's not the greatest. There is no other like him. There is no other God. And so do you see what I'm wrestling with? How, how do we see God? Do we really, do we really understand who he is? Have we, in, have we engaged in scripture enough to have a clear view of the magnificence of the creator God of the universe, of the holy God of the universe? Of the coming, uh, 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 coming kingdom of God that's going to come at the end of all of these things that that Jesus is going to usher in when He returns um, for His church and 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 establishes His kingdom. Do we really have our minds and our hearts around that reality? I think that's the challenge for me. Right? Do I see God in this way? And um, yeah, absolutely true, Josh. The, the the reasonable response when we begin to see who God really is, it, it is really Romans 12, 1 and 2, right? To, to offer our bodies as a living sacrifice. When we see the mercies of God, when we recognize who he is, it's the right response. It's the only reasonable response. And that's that's what I believe we see David do in, in, in verses 7, 8, 9, and 10 in Psalm 24 this morning. It is He's like, you guys... The glory, lift up your heads, O gates, be be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the king of glory may come in. Who is the king of glory? It's the Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord, mighty in battle. He's exalting the king of kings, the God of the universe. And, and David's extolling his praises because he is in a relationship with him, literally in, in he's his growing in his faith and who God is and his trust in, in his provision and his power and his might in his righteousness and his ownership of his life. And it results in the praise of, of his people. It results in the, that willing sacrifice to offer our bodies as living sacrifices to the God that we would worship him alone, that we would, that we would not put anything up before him and that we would follow him in obedience. How does that impact your life today? I hope as you think about what it means to follow God, as you think about what it means to seek after the Lord, to seek the face of God this morning, that you will dive into scripture, you'll dive into the word of God, that you'll dive, that, that, that you will uh, commit your time into prayer, to ask God to open your eyes that you would see him for who he is, that you would see him as, as, as he would reveal himself to you, that it would change how we live, not just what we think about him, not just what we say we believe, but it would change how we live. And it would change um, the way that we view sin in our lives and the way that we view our, our, our challenges and our struggles. And that it would change how we worship God. How we exalt Him. How we praise Him. Um, how we hope in Him when things are difficult, when, when we're struggling in life. That that would be transformed. As the Romans 2, uh, uh, Romans 12 uh, verse 2 talks about having being transformed by God, by his word and, and, and those things. So I, that's my prayer for you today. That's my hope is that as you engage the word of God uh, over the next couple of days, be sure to be in, uh, read the Psalms, read whatever passages you normally read. Um, I won't see you again until Sunday, um, but Sunday morning, I'll, I would love to see you all. Well, I won't, I mean, I would love to see you all. I won't see you, but Sunday morning, it'd be great to have you join us online. Um, 10 o'clock, we're going to be doing communion celebrating our uh, saying, uh, you know, appreciation of our moms for, for Mother's Day, um, how much we all love and appreciate them and the blessing that they are to us. And then we're going to we're going to wrestle through the text of, of what the disciples are, are asking Jesus and, and how Jesus um, how Jesus corrects that view. And, and he reorients their whole identity around what it means to be um, important in the kingdom. And uh, and so I'm looking forward to wrestling with you with that. 
and and wrestling through the text this week. Uh, God bless you guys. Have a wonderful afternoon and and please seek the Lord. Pursue him today. Chase the text. Get in get in the word of God and let the spirit of God overwhelm your heart and transform your lives that you would reflect his glory and that you would live for him uh for his for his kingdom purposes. That's my prayer for myself today. That's my prayer for my my myself this weekend that that everything I do uh it, it was the Psalm 19 let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be pleasing to you Lord. Um, and that, that's my prayer for you today. So God bless you guys. Have a wonderful day. And um, yep, it is a little bit shorter today. I'm, I'm actually going to try and shorten it up and make them a little bit more concise and uh, see if I can say less words and maybe be more, uh, have them, have them, I don't know if they'll be more uh, poignant, but sometimes less is more when it comes to my um, gift of gab. So God bless you guys. Have a wonderful day and we'll catch you later. Bye.